Okay, everybody, I think I'm live. It's six o'clock. Is everybody ready to make a jelly roll rug? These are really fun to do. So please comment when you get in that you can see me. People are texting me too. Oh, Connie made it. Hi, Connie. Make sure you, you comment if, you, um, if you're if you in and you're, you're hearing me okay. Deb Parkinson. Hi, Deb. I like the little, the little thumbs ups. Those are cute. Oh, Marsha L'Oreal. That was Marsha. There's Marsha. Hi, Marsha. So make sure that you write a comment when you get in. Hi, Deb. Hi, Marsha. Oh, here comes Donna. Just a second, I have to answer someone on by text. Refresh the browser. Sometimes if you're in the group and you don't see me go live, if you don't re Fresh the browser, it won't actually show that I'm live. So hopefully that'll help her. <laughs> yeah, I was a little late getting on. All of a sudden I thought, oh, I didn't get my iron started. So I have to have my iron for tonight. So I uh, didn't have it ready. I had to go get that and get it filled with water quick. So I was running a little late tonight. We'll wait a few more minutes. How's everybody doing today? It's kind of an icky cold windy day isn't it the sun came out at least marcia where are you are you someplace warm oh connie hi i have water in this shop coming through a faucet instead of the pipe yay <laughs> oh here comes the nobles hi no hi uh, is it kim or is it is it the whole family i see kim noble hi hi kim yeah, let's see. I'm, I have to scroll up. Sorry, I'm missing some of your comments. I'm, I'm trying. Lisa's here. Hi, Lisa. And Denise. Denise Walker. Hi, Denise. And Denise. There's Denise Remke and Denise Walker. Hello. Judy. Oh, there's Judy. Oh, here's Kathy. Kathy made it. Glad you found me. And Lori. Hi, Lori. Oh, Marsha, you're in hot Atlanta. Is it is it really hot there? Or are you being funny? I hopefully it is hot. Because it's not hot here. <laughs> it's very cool. Have to scroll through. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll through to see. Oh, Kathy and Orlin. Awesome. Lori made it. Great, great. I really look forward to this. I've been starting to look forward to this every week. It's kind of fun to talk to you, even though I'm not, you know, I'm not really there with you, but I feel like I am. Hopefully you've all been having a good, good weekend. It was kind of, it was just kind of nasty yesterday too. So it's going to be fun to sit down and just make, just do something for fun and make a rug. I've been, has everybody, a bunch of you have been sewing along with me. I had several of you post your finished um, coils. Did everybody get to see those on the group? And um, I've got mine ready to go here. Hopefully my, I'm checking my iron to make sure it's going. It's heating up. It takes a little bit for it to heat up. So I didn't get it started very long. I can hear it <laughs> working. So I have a special iron. I'll show you my special iron I use. You can use a standard steam iron to oil to do your rug, but I have a special one that I really love. That it has lots of. Um, it's a it's a boiler iron. Oh, it's warm. Oh, I'm glad it's warm, Marcia. Can you bring some of it home with you when you come home? We need it. Let me tell you. I think we're all getting tired of it. It's only 14 degrees now went down since I come, came home. 
bunch of us got together and we're sewing on something today too. So I've been sewing all day. I was at the store for, for from 10 to like, I guess we left around 3 or 3.30. So it was fun. Okay. So are you all ready to start making a rug? It looks like there's a bunch of you here. So we'll go ahead and get started. And and if again, if you don't, if I don't answer a question right away, um, if you m instant message me instead of do in the comments, I'll try to look as closely as I can, but they don't scroll up very well. And if you send me an instant message, I'll get it on my phone. It's sitting right next to the sewing machine. So, okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to get the camera put down so I can go over to the sewing machine here. So get, take me just a second. Hopefully I don't make everybody sick. Taking the legs down here. It needs to go down a notch for the for the sewing machine. Okay, looks like we had a couple more comments. Oh, here comes Clara. Hi, Clara. All right. So I'm going to turn this around to my sewing machine. Got the cord wrapped around it here. Okay. Let's get it pushed down here. All right. All right. So hopefully you can see okay. There we go. That looks pretty good. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk to uh, talk a little bit about is um, I'm going to talk about the feet and the needles that I'm going to use tonight. Um, I usually start with either this is just the standard J foot. Most of you have brother machines, so the standard zigzag foot. I'll either start with that or you can use an open toe foot. Hopefully you can see this. It's kind of it's kind of a um, clear one. And you can see there's nothing in the middle here. It's an, what they call an open toe foot. Um, and then it has like a little red line in the center, and I bet you won't be able to see that. But only, if I get a little closer, you can maybe see if it'll focus for you. Um, that I will start normally with on my rug with one of these two feet. I think tonight I'm just going to use my J foot. I mean, either one is fine. Um, it is a little easier to see where you're zigzagging with the open toe foot. Um, some of the machines are not terribly fond of the open toe foot for some reason, and I'll get a little bit of skipping. It's mostly the older machines that I've had that problem with. This one doesn't seem to skip with the open toe foot on, but um, I'm just going to use the J foot. If if you do get some skipping with an open toe foot, go back to your J foot. And I know it's a little harder to see, but it does um, keep keep you from skipping stitches when you're zigzagging. So I am going to use my J foot. And then the needle I have in this machine right now, let's see if you can see my little package, is a Microtex number 8012. That's kind of my favorite needle for these. And then the other one I use is just my plain number 11, honestly, my number 11 embroidery needles. So those are the two that I use the most. The Microtex have a really sharp tip on them. So I do, I use either one. It just depends on which one I have in the machine. Um, I am actually out of Microtex needles. You can see my package is empty. So I had had to order some more. <laughs> and I really like those. But that's been kind of my favorite one. Um, my thread is, let me pull it down here off the stand. This is um, my cotton thread. Let's see if I can get it down here where you can see it. This is the cotton thread that I get from Craftsy, and it's 100% um, Pima cotton. Um, I really like that, and um, that's what I'm using for this rug. I often use Orofil. That works fine, too. Um, the cotton Orofil, the number 50 weight. And then I also have started using some of that um, Sewology Pima cotton thread from Hobby Lobby. Seems to work pretty well through the machines. It's very smooth and it's not linty. So try a few different threads and see which works best for you. I would probably recommend a cotton thread most of the time. There was a couple of rugs that I've done in boutiques that I actually had to use a um, polyester thread to keep my machine from skipping and I don't that that was just the combination that worked 
for me. So you may have to have maybe a couple of choices of thread and a couple of needle choices just in case you have some zigzagging skipping going on. Um, and um, then you'll know as you get, you know, as you get going, you'll know if that what if it's working or not. So just have a couple of options available that you might need to mix and match your needles and your threads a little. Looks like I might have a couple questions, so I'm just looking to see. Oh, Judy's here, and Claire is here. Oh, good, lots of people are here. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you then is on the screen. So I'm going to move this over just a little to the screen of the machine. I'm having getting caught here. Okay. I want to show you the stitch I'm going to use. Now, remember last week we used the straight stitch, and I like to use the one with the polka dot. If you have one of the older machines, you have to choose the stitch between the polka dot stitch and the, the straight stitch that has the two lines because you only have one reverse button on your machine. Most of the newer machines have two reverse buttons. One of them just ties a knot in place and one of them re physically reverses no matter what um, stitch you have chosen. I still do this because I got in the habit of choosing my stitch. There's also a choice with the zigzag. So if you look at the zigzag here, this stitch here, this zigzag number 10 on my machine, I have a Luminaire, has a polka dot up here. And then this zigzag has the two lines. So if you have one of the older machines, if you pick the zigzag with the polka dot, if you hit your reverse button, it will just tie a knot in place. And if you hit, if you choose number nine with the two lines, it would actually go backwards. So I like to use the one with the polka dot because that way when I'm zigzagging, I don't want it to go back over the zigzags because you can really see it, especially if you're using a very contrasting thread. I had a couple of students used a real, had real light colored fabric and a dark thread. And it was very obvious that they had to zigzag over um, the stitches. So they don't always line up real well. So if you use the one with the, with the polka dot, um, that one, if, especially if you have an older brother baby lock machine, you will need to choose that one so that it will only tie a knot in place and not back up. Now on the newer machines, we'll go back over here to the other side again. On the newer machines, we have the two buttons. We have the button with the polka dot that ties a knot in place, and we have the button that backs up physically. So we, we, can, we can just push this button all the time, and it doesn't matter which stitch you have. But I know some of you have like um, quattros, and I know Connie has a, um, a QC1000, so you would need to choose the stitch with the polka dot in order to not back up physically. Okay, so hopefully that's as clear as mud and everybody got that. But that, but it, it's more pertinent to if you have a brother machine that's a little bit older than, than it is for the newer ones. Okay, all right. So we've got, we know what foot we got on this. We're going to start out with the J foot. This is the J foot. I've got to get organized here and get my, get this in between my legs here just a second. It's hard to sew with, with the camera in between your legs. Okay, so I've got my J foot on the machine. I've got a Microtex needle in, and I've got my um, cotton thread in the needle. I'm just trying to keep track if there's anybody who has questions. Everybody got it out there? All right, so what it tells you to do in the instructions is to measure. Now, when you've created your tube, this is the, an, the, the, the end of the tube. And remember, that one is the one that's just squared off. It, it is not tapered. The other end that we started with, with the taper, is actually going to be the outside of the rug. So I'm starting with this, the, the blunt end that I, this was the very last few stitches I took on this rug. So this is the inside, all right? So we're going to start with this end, and I'm going to measure, you're not going to be able to see this, but I measured 
where that pin is, is 17 inches from the end. And that's what it says in the instructions, to measure 17 inches from the blunt end of the long strip, okay? So I just put a pin in there usually like this to help me remember where, I, where my 17 inches is. The other thing I wanted to tell you about is the length and the width of the zigzag we're going to use. So I'm going to go run back over here again. I like to use, this seems to work well for me, you want to use at least a 5 millimeter width. Um, some of the older machines just only did 5 millimeters, but most of ours do bigger than that. Ours are 7. Um, I like 5.5 for the width and 2.0 for the length. So it's a fairly um, wide, kind of long, elongated zigzag. Okay, so that's the length that we're in. That is in the instructions, so you can have you'll have it written down in your in your pattern too. So, give me a second here. I'm going to scroll down so I can see. Oh, Denise Walker says, "Do you have the same weight thread in the bobbin?" Yes, I do, Denise. Denise, I like to use um, matching thread in the bobbin and in the top. Yep. So it's the number 50 cotton thread. All right. So I have measured my 17 inches from the end. And this is the tricky part. And I don't know how well I'm going to back up a little bit so I can hold this out in front of me. OK, I need to fold this strip to get started. And this is probably the hardest part. So if you, in the picture on page, it's like the one of the last pages of the instructions. It's like the second to the last page. you got to get this going the right direction when you fold it. Otherwise, it's going to come out with an open edge. See, we have this open edge on this side, and we and the, this side is where we, we where we folded it. So we need to make sure we get this folded correctly. So it says here that the sides to the left, the open sides, the the um, sides to the. I have to look at it again. Sorry, I always have to look at my picture. So here's the picture. <laughs> I always have to look at this. It says single fold sides to the right double fold sides to the left. So in other words, the, the, the closed side is going to be on the right. And then I'm going to flip this around. I'm flipping it over so that I've still got the, all, all the open sides are to the left. Because then when I start running down this, oops, see, I did it wrong. I always do it wrong. I always flip it the wrong way. It has to go, I always have to look at this. This is the blunt end. Yep, so I did it wrong. I always do it wrong. So here's the left. Here's the blunt end on the left-hand side, okay? The rest of the coil is on the right. It's over here. <laughs> The left, the open sides are on the left. Open side is here, closed side is here, and then I'm going to flip this over this way so that all the left, all the open sides are still on the left. So if you look at the picture, I always have to look at it to make sure I'm doing it right. All right, so I've got my coil started, and then the blunt end is on the inside. So here's the blunt end here. And then this is the rest of the coil. So hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna, I think I got a question here. Jackie's here. Oh, Margaret's here. All right. So again, the blunt end is on the inside on the left with the open sides to the left. And then I'm going to flip this. Here's the rest of the coil. I'm gonna flip it towards me. And then that will be on the right hand side to start. And then when I'm coiling my rug and going around and around, this closed side is going to be on the outside edge. So you don't have them with the open sides. If it ends up with the open sides on the outside edge, you can fix it at the end. But you just have to zigzag it shut. Okay, because we don't want those open ends to be on the edge. All right. So hopefully that, that was clear. I have a hard time with this. I always have to look at the picture really carefully <laughs> that I don't get it started wrong. Okay. So we're going to move forward a little bit.
get this all moved forward. Can you see my, okay, there's still that pin in there. I'm going to take it out so I don't stab myself. I'm going to put this on the bed of my machine. I've still got it folded up here. Open edges are right here. And I'm going to put this under my foot. And the best way that I've done this, it, it works the best, is if I can get it pushed in there. And then make sure that the whole foot is about as flat as you can get it. So I don't start way off here on the end because it's never going to start up. You want your foot kind of be to be flat. So I go in a little ways, put my foot down, and then I use my needle up and down button. So if I move up here, you can see it. This button right here. I'm going to use my needle up and down button, and I'm going to drop my needle down into the fabric. So before I start sewing, I always drop my needle. All right. Then I got to get up here so I can get to my foot controller. <laughs> My legs aren't very long. I can't reach my full controller. Here we go. Okay. So remember that little polka dot button that I use that makes it tie a knot in place. I'm going to press this a couple times on that side where I dropped it. And then I'm going to, I just tapped my foot controller and moved the, the needle to the other side. And I'm going to tie it in again with that same button. I'm just going to tap my foot controller, move it over, and I'm going to tie a couple of knots in here so I have some knots, okay, in the center section. All right, so I got it tied in. I tied it in a few times. Now, the trick with these is to keep them very straight. So don't be pulling them off to the side. I'm going to put this down just a little further so you can see it. So don't pull it off to the side when you're sewing or push it around. You want them to be very straight because if you get them crooked, you will all, your, your rug will continue to stay crooked then. All right. Oops, we're still having camera problems here. Let me get this moved over a little bit more. There we go. How's that? All right, so we're going to sew. I've got my, my zigzag at five and a half and then the length is two. And I'm just going to sew down a little ways here. I'm keep trying to keep it very straight, and I'm trying to keep the center. And I'm going to talk about another foot here in a few minutes. I have another foot that I use when I get started. I have to go around a couple of times before I can use the other foot. It's called the edge joining foot. But you can't really use it at the very beginning because the uh, curve that we're going about to go around is too tight. And I, I use a regular foot for a few rounds and then I start using the edge joining. I love that edge joining foot because you don't even have to think. Okay. Oh, Janet's here too. Cool. All right. So I'm just about ready to get around to go around to that corner. Now this is a little tough. This first couple of corners is a little tough. I'm going to go down closer to the end. Okay. And then when I start getting about to this end, I'm going to grab, I'm going to move my hand back here. And I'm going to hold on to this back here and I'm going to actually pull it towards me as I push in with this hand. And then I can get around. I go around quite slowly. Okay. Then I might have to raise my foot. And I do have to this time. I have to raise my foot a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to go take a few more slow stitches. But the trick is to pull with this hand and then push in with this hand while you're, while you're going around. So I'm just going to kind of take a couple more slow stitches around. And then I've got around the corner. And then you want to make sure that you're staying as straight as you can. You want your, your tube to stay straight while you're sewing. So we're going down to the other end.
once you get going on this, you know, honestly, the the rug part, this part takes a lot less time than the than the tube to part does. So, okay, so we're getting down towards the end here. And then when I get down to this end, I'm going to have to do the same thing. I got to have to pull from this back part and pull it in towards me. And I'm going to go around slowly because it's kind of tight when these 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 first couple rounds are a little tricky. Just slowly work your way around. I'm pulling with my left hand and pushing with my right one. And then we're going to kind of go down to the end here. All right. So I'm down at the end. Now, if you look at the end here, see this little this little cup right here? That that's not going to be good because if we don't iron at this point, it will stay that way. So I am going to use my polka dot button up here. One with the with the round polka dot and I am going to tie this off right where I'm at because I need to iron at this point. I've only gone around basically one time. I'm going to tap my foot controller. I'm going to use the up and down again and tie it off. I usually do this about two or three times just to make sure that I, I've got it tied in a knot. Okay. I'm going to cut this off. And then at this point, you can see how cupped this is on the end. And it is like that on the other end. Because remember how tight they were? Okay, so now we have to iron. This is the trick with these rugs. If you have to iron, you have to iron a lot, especially at the very beginning, and you have to use starch. So that's the two things that I highly recommend. It doesn't really, um, it doesn't really, really tell you in the instructions how important it is to iron. And if you don't iron about every other row for the very beginning, you're, you will have a bowl instead of a, a rug. Okay, so I don't normally iron on my on my um, sewing table, but you can. I wanted you to be able to see without me having to move the camera too much. So this is um, my an, a, a wool ironing mat. These work really well. I like these really well. When the rug gets really big, um, I have a big table um, cover that goes over my cutting table so I can iron on that. Um, you want them to be flat when you're ironing. Don't try to iron them on a small surface like an ironing board. Try to lay them out where they're flat so that you, when you're ironing on a big flat surface. That really helps. You also notice, and I, if, if you can see my machine here, my cabinet allows my machine to be flatbed. And I've got a lot of space. I've got about um, 24 inches on the side of my machine over here. And so when I'm working on this rug as it gets bigger, my rug is laying flat all the time. There's no, it's not falling off the edge of something. So anything you can do to help you do that is very important because then your rugs will stay flatter um, than trying to do this or like rolling it up. It's just going to make it curl more. So I would, I would tell you if you have like an extension table for a machine, if it's on a flat table, or if you have these that you can put down into the table so that it's flat, this is the way to make your rugs, okay? So here is my cuppy bowl. Right now it's a bowl. And I'm going to use some starch. I use, this is my starch. It's in, this is my funny little bottle. Um, I, I'm allergic to Best Press. If you like Best Press, go ahead and use that. That works great. Um, I'm allergic to it, so I use um, vodka and distilled water. Um, it's one ounce of vodka to uh, eight ounces of distilled water. Um, so that's what I use for starch. It works really well. Um, you can put a little bit of a scent in it also if you want to. Um, but if you want the recipe, I can put it up in the file section. So I'm going to spray this with starch on the end. And I've got my um, cool iron here. I love this iron. This is a Eurosteam Evolution iron, and it's a boiler iron. So it's not the same as a regular iron, and it has 50 pounds of pressure. When I put steam down, there's 50 pounds of pressure. 
So you'll you'll notice as I I do this, there's a lot some noise. So so I'm going to really steam that flat. Okay, so look how nice and flat that is. Now I got it a little crooked, so I'm going to pull it because we also want when we're steaming it, we want to make sure we steam it nice and straight. That looks pretty good. I'm going to do I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to use a little starch again. And I'm going to do the other side. So you want to do both sides when you're doing this. Because if you start out with a flat rug, your rug will stay flat. So now I'm going to get the other end here. Here's the other end. Here's my loose side that I've got here. I've got to get this out of my way. Okay, I'm going to give this some starch. Oops, iron my tube. All right, get that nice and flat. And then I'm going to turn this over. And I'm going to do the side. So but you always want to do both sides because if you don't do both sides, it'll still cut. Okay, give it a little more starch. Okay. So look how nice and flat that is. Get this out of your way so you can see. So look how nice and flat this is. All right. So I've only gone around basically one time. So I'm going to sit down now, and we're going to start another round. You do need to let it dry a little bit. It gets a little damp sometimes, and you'll you'll skip stitches if it's damp. So you want to make sure it dries just a little before you start up again. Get my cord out of the way here. All right. So whoops. Got my rug tied up in the iron cord. Okay, so see how nice and flat this is? Look how nice and flat it is. It's amazing how much a little bit of steam will take care of this, and, and it really tames the rug down. The, the, a lot of the, I've had several students that have taken my classes, and their rugs, they tried rugs, and everything was completely cupped into a bowl. And their teachers never told them to. Um, I just attached my quilt table. Oh, Jackie just attached her quilt table. Yep. <laughs> okay. So then I'm going to go back to where I, I ended. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of white. So it's right here where I ended. I'm going to go ahead, and I still got my J foot on. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up there, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie a knot again, just like I did before. On one side, I'm going to tap my foot controller. I'm going to turn it over to the other side, tie another knot. Do it one more time, tie another knot. That way, you're really not going to see, you know, you're really not going to see those um, those knots, and then the zigzags will not show. Okay, so I got to move my iron over just a little bit here. All right, so we're going to go around this curve. So here we go. We're going to start up again. We're still kind of small down here, so it, you have to kind of pull. Again, I'm pulling with my left hand and kind of pushing in with my right. Okay. Got to get my mat out of my way. Let's go around these curves slowly. They're a little tricky. I think you're all able to see it okay. Okay. Going on to the next side. Here we go. There's a little um, there's a little teeny mark in the center of my foot that I aim for that crease with, and that that's why I start often with the J foot, and then I'm going to move on to the other foot, but we have to go around a couple times here to be able to do that. Getting around to this end. This is going to be a little tight again. I'm just going to take it around slow. All right, getting around there. As you get around a few more times, it makes the ends are much easier, and they're not so tight. My uh, machine seems to like this combination of thread and. Uh, needle so it's not skipping or anything all right 
So I'm getting down here to, to the second end. I don't know if you can quite see it in the camera yet. Okay, look up, oh, look at that big cup. Well, we gotta go, we gotta go iron again. So we're gonna do another iron. I'm gonna tie off again. All right, and then I'm gonna cut. All right, so we'll go over here again. I'm gonna do another iron. Oops, got it caught. Keep flatten it out, or straighten it out, I should say. And then I'm going to give it some starch and a press. Now, if you don't have one of these irons, I know some of some of my friends have these. These are awesome irons. So if you don't have one of these, um, it like a regular iron works really well. I have a chi iron. I got a new iron not too long ago, and I really like it. So I'm going to do the other side now. And it, it does really well, but this one is great for the rugs. If you want something flat, this iron makes everything completely flat. All right, so that, that side looks nice. Now we're going to flip it over here and do this other side. See, look, see how cuppy that is? A little starch on it. And I'm ironing on one of those wool ironing mats. I really like this. It, it works really good. I've never had one. I just got it this last summer, and I like it. It's pretty good size, but it's nice that I can move it around then. Put a little more starch on here. And give it a good press. Okay. So see how nice and flat that is? Okay. So that that's that that is really the the entire uh, making the rug is going around. I often just go around, especially at this level, I just go around a couple of times, you know, I'll do both ends and then I stop, use the tying and then cut it off and then come over and iron. And I iron a whole lot at the very, very beginning. As I get along with the rug, I do actually um, stop ironing every single turn, you know, around. I won't go, um, I'll probably go a couple, maybe three before I iron, but it also makes, makes a difference whether you're, um, ironing or your your sewing surface is flat so if you have a, a sewing surface that that it's falling off one end you may still see it cupping so you may have to iron more often um, when you wash these you can also wash these when you wash them you may have to take them out of the of the dryer don't dry them really dry uh, and then take them out and then you can iron them again and then they'll flatten out again for you i think i have a question here Oh, Denise says her cat has joined her too and is and is uh, watching the class. My cats are very upset. My cats are sitting out in the kitchen looking at me through the the glass windows in my in my sewing room. So they're not very happy because <laughs> I'm not letting them out here. Okay, now I want to show you the the other the other um, foot that I use, and I'm not probably going to be able to put it on right now. But this foot. Might have to go if I go around another time real quickly, I'll be able to put it on. But this foot is the edge joining foot, and there's a little tine up through the center of it. And what's so cool about it is that you can run this little um, this little guide right between the two strips of the rug, and you don't even have to pay attention to where you're driving. It just naturally stays straight, and it's so great. So let me go around one more time. Hopefully you don't mind just watching me sew a little bit. We'll just go around one more time here. Except I kind of messed up my tube here, so I'll have to may have to press that. Doesn't want to lay flat now. I think I caught it with the iron. Okay. So let's go around this one more time, then I think I can put that that other foot on so you can see how cool that foot is. Drop my needle. Tie the knot. 
tap my foot controller, tie another knot. Okay, oops. And then we're gonna go around again. So here we go. I find this very relaxing. I just love these rugs. They're so much fun to make. Okay, so the other one I wanted to let you know about, I found a rug pattern on, I think I might have mentioned it last week, on Shabby Fabrics, and it is a wedge rug. And I think I had a couple of other people that wanted to make the rectangle rug. Would anybody like to make the rectangle rug like this? Because we could do that one in a sew along. But that wedge rug is really cool. You make it like the rectangle rug. And um, then you cut it out, and it's it's oval. So it's like flat along the back side, and then it's oval on the front. So it's so cool, and I, I would like to make one of those. Put it out in front of my kitchen sink. I thought that would be really cool. All right, so we're down at the second end. I'm going to kind of slow down as I go around. Keep hitting my iron down here. I like to keep the the left side of my machine when I'm doing this completely empty with nothing on it. So there's plenty of room for the rug to lay flat. Um, so this is unusual. I actually have stuff over there because I like I'm just using it for tonight, so I don't have to get up and down as much. So, oh, do we have another question? Oh, hi, Lynn. Yes, yeah. Lynn wants to make the rectangle rug. Yeah, I want to make the rectangle rug, and I I want to I want to do one of those wedge rugs. So I'll work on one of those wedge rugs this week, and I'll put pictures of the rectangle rugs up too, and you can decide which ones you want to do. But we might make another rug, or else we could do another. I'd like to make one. Of, I've got some really cute pillows that I've been working on, settee pillows. I think I showed you those, those to you a couple weeks ago. So we might maybe we'll do those. That would be an embroidery project. All right. So I've gotten around both sides of this. And see, I'm pretty cupped again. So I'm going to have to iron yet again. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie off down here. We'll do one more press and then I'll show you how to put how to use that other foot. Okay. Do that. Move back over here again. Are you able to see on the camera okay? Can everybody see okay? This camera's pretty good. I mean, it actually seems like it's working pretty good. All right, so we're going to put this down. See, it's, it's, it's not near as cupped as it was. It's much better. I'm going to give it a little more starch. Good press. Flatten it, good, flatten it out. Flip it over. This is going to be a pretty rug. This was kind of like some retro 1930s prints, kind of. It was, it's kind of a neat jelly roll. Okay. Flip it on. Do the other side here. This one's pretty cupped, too. So we don't want, those, we don't want that rug to be all poofy there. Oops. This flipped over. And I kind of push out as I'm doing this because then it makes the it, it flattens it out a little bit more if I'm kind of pushing to, out out towards the outside edge. This one end kind of wants to be cupped, but here we go. Looking much better. All right, look how nice and flat that is. And it's straight. You want to make sure you're keeping it nice and straight, and you don't want to get a kidney bean-shaped rug. I've had that happen to me once, <laughs> that kind of kidney bean-shaped. All right, I have a couple questions. Looks like we have a couple questions here. Yes to the rectangle. Oh, pillow. You want to do the pillow, Jackie? Yeah, I want to do the pillow, too. Okay, cool. Yep, so we might do the pillow next. Do you remember the pillow last week? I, I'd like to do the the um, maybe the March one, the embroidery project, and then, then we can do one of the other rugs. It'll give me a couple weeks to get it done because I'd like to make one of the other rugs too. Okay, let's do this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change my foot now. 
So this foot, we're going to put this um, edge joining foot. Hopefully you can see that there. If I turn it that way, can you see the little thing that goes down the center? And we have these at the store. So if nobody, if you don't have one of these, this is just an awesome foot. I use it for like um, lace to lace insertion. Like um, like my friend Connie that's on here, she she makes dolls, and I use it for for putting lace together, butting lace up together, that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to bring this in, and I'm going to put that little that little thing that's in the middle right in between the two pieces of the cord or the coil. I'm going to drop my needle again, tie a knot, tap my foot controller, tie a knot. I usually do that about three times. I'll do it one more time. So if I can't reach my foot controller, there we go. Okay. Then I'm going to, by keeping that in the center, I don't even have to really watch. I can see that the that the little guide is keeping the two pieces together, and I I butt them up against each other. It just really makes this fast. I'm pulling with my left hand, pushing in with my right. This uh, this edge joining foot is particularly nice when you are doing the straight rugs because the straight rugs have no none of these curves. So it's just so fast, you can just kind of butt the, the, the two pieces up together and they just go, All right? So this is my little, there's that little tine, it's right in here. But I can see it so much better because then I don't have to be watching if, to make sure that I'm hitting that, that open edge in between. Oops, a second, I hit my iron. Okay, I'm pulling with my left hand and I'm kind of pushing in with my right. All right, and we're on the straightaway. Okay, I'm going to iron again. But at this point, I want to show you how to finish the rug. So you just keep doing this until you get to the end, okay? But I want to show you how to finish the end. So I'm going to tie this off, and then I'm ready to iron again here. And I will just continue doing as I've been showing you for, there's a lot of rounds yet, but it actually goes pretty fast. You'd be surprised how quickly you can get one of these done. Once you get to sewing on it, you can just kind of buzz around. When you don't have to iron as many times, it goes a little faster. So, okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and iron this again. You can see it's cupping on the end again. So, I'm going to iron this. And then I'm going to continue working on my rug this evening while I watch Victoria later. So, I'd, I'd like to get this all done. But this is going to be a real pretty rug. And I'll post a picture as soon as I get it all put together. But I did want to show you how to finish this. So you not everybody comfortable with this portion? Just keep going around and around until you're done. But remember, iron, 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 starch, starch, starch. That's my motto now with these rugs. Anybody got any questions? Maybe I put you all to sleep. All right, so I'm going to set this one down on the floor, and I'm going to get my other rug up here. I've got another rug that I've been working on, but if you give me a second, I want to get rid of this iron. I'm going to move the iron out of the way so because so I don't have it sitting here. Okay. I'm going to set it down on the floor over here. Okay. So I have another rug that I've made. This is a real pretty rug. It was black and white. Hopefully you can see it here. I made this a while ago, and I'm going to switch my thread back to black thread so, I'm, so I can show you how to finish this. So you can see I've gotten all the way around. I've gone around and around and around, 
And then here's the little, remember the first little end we did that we did the little bevel? Here's the little skinny end right here. So we'll switch the thread out here. This is also number 50 um, cotton thread. I think it's also the Pima cotton from Craftsy. They have really nice sets. You can get like a whole bunch of colors and really like them a lot. But the Soology at, at, at Hobby Lobby, I've been quite pleased with. So far, I've been getting along real well with that as well. So if you don't have a lot of access to Orofil. The, the Craftsy Pima and so does the um, Hobby Lobby, it doesn't seem to curl quite as much or something. I was having a little trouble with curling with the um, Orofil fat threads. So whatever works for you though, if you like Orofil, just use it. I just happen to like something a little differently. So, all right, let's see, has anybody got any more questions? Oh, we had a couple questions here, it looks like. I'm trying to keep up with them, it's hard for me to see them. Second here. Get them to scroll up for me. There we go, Lynn. What's the fancy iron's name? Oh, the fancy iron is the Eurosteam Evolution. And um, I get these. I got mine at a quilt show. They have them online, but I bought, um, I usually buy them at a quilt show. They're a couple hundred dollars. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's probably the best iron I've ever owned, and I have two of them. Oh, Connie says she's not asleep. That's good. Like the blue. Which blue was that, Jackie? Do you like the blue in my rug? This one's black and white. Okay, so to finish this, see I've been going around and it's all zigzagged and it's all nice and flat. See how nice and flat this rug is? It was rolled up a little bit for a little while, so I had to, I ironed it again. Okay, so it's all nice and flat. Got to get my, oop, do I have my thread threaded? Thread the machine. Works better with the threaded machine. Now, when I get just about ready to do the end like this, I like to take that edge joining foot off because it kind of gets in my way, and I put the J foot back on. So I use the edge joining foot. Um, once it gets just a little bit bigger, the rug to start with, um, it's, just, it's just too tight. So I use it, you know, for probably three quarters of it. But I like to take it off when I get to the end here. So here is my rug. I'm still at a full size coil up here, so I'm just going to go up here, put my foot down. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to tack it in. I'll tap my foot controller, tack it in. Okay, then I'm going to zigzag down to close to the end. Hopefully, you'll be able to see me here. And then what I do when I get to the very end, I got to go up just a little bit more so you can see it. Let's see if I can back this up just a little bit so you can see the end. Okay. Gonna get close to the end. And then as I get to the end, what I like to do is take this little end and I want to actually shove it under the rug so that it actually tapers off to basically nothing because I don't like to have like a like a blunt end here. I want it to be real tapered so that you don't really notice where the rug started and stopped. So see how I've got it basically tapered off the nothing here. Okay, so I've got it stuck under there and I'm going to hold it and I'm going to zigzag off the end. All right, so I'm off the end. Now this is where I do back up over the rug. I don't like to do anywhere else, but I do, whoops, except I hit the wrong button. I like to back up over the end and go over that end a few times so that it's good and caught at the very, especially at the edge. So I just zigzagged over it so it's got like three zigzags and then I stop with my needle right here on the edge and I'm going to tie a knot there. So I zigzagged over it a couple times just to secure it. And then I'm going to tie a couple knots at the end, and then I'm going to cut. All right, so let's see if I can get this a little closer so you can see it here. 
Sorry, it's kind of stiff. <laughs> there we go. All right. So here's where the end is. And see how I have this tapered off to basically nothing? So you're not going to have a big ridge there. Some of the rugs that I've seen, they come off and they have a blunt end and it just goes boop right here. So I like it this to be tapered off so you really don't even see where the rug starts and stops. All right, so that's how you finish it with that little taper. Just tie it off really well and cut off. And you can't even really tell where the edge of the rug, it just barely could tell where the edge of the rug is. So if I back off, I'll back off and show you more of a piece of the rug here. So see where the edge is? This is the edge right here, but you can see it's practically all just rounded right along the edge. So it looks it looks real neat. And um, they turn out really well that way. Okay, so everybody knows what needles to use, thread to use, starch, use your starch and use your iron and be very consistent with it because otherwise you're going to have a bowl. We could make a bowl if you'd like, but I don't really like moles <laughs> with my rugs. So, okay. Anybody else have any questions? Does this make, is this all making sense to everybody? So I'm anxious, anxious to see everybody's rug. So I'm going to work on mine tonight, and I'll get it posted as soon as I get it done. And I'm really anxious to see all of yours. So, but maybe we'll do the, the next sew along will be my new um, pillow. And I'll post it up um, probably tomorrow, the picture of it, and how you can get the design if you want it. And it's a St. It's a Patrick's Day pillow. And then the next one will do either the rectangle rug or that wedge rug, because that wedge rug is really, really neat, too. But I'm really anxious to see every, any ideas on what stopping the rugs from slipping on the floor. Oh, yeah, what most people do, Jackie, is they get that rug. You can get those, those um, rubbery things that you put underneath rugs. I have a rug in my living room on a laminate floor that I just have that, that rug stuff. And you can just lay those on, on the floor and then the rug on top and it and it doesn't slip. Because my rugs my my rug in my living room never slips with those things under it. Anybody else have any other suggestions for that? Because I've always used those, they're kind of those rubbery things that are almost like um, shelf paper, you know, that rubberized shelf paper, but they make them for to keep your rugs in place. Okay. I suppose I could put myself back on camera instead of just talking to you. <laughs> we'll turn around here. <laughs> okay. So I was sorry that I made it a little confusing at the very beginning about how to get the rug started. So hopefully you will, um, if you have a question about that, I will, I could post that picture or check the picture in your pattern again, just so you get it folded the right way. And then, so the, all the open pieces are going to the left and all the, the closed ones are on the right. So I always have trouble with that. I always have to look at the picture. Oh, <laughs> you think you're too heavy, Jackie? I don't think so. So yeah, I think I think that the these rugs are so much fun. They they make such nice gifts. You know what? Like for my dad, I gave him a, a Cubs rug for Christmas. So he's he just loves his Cubs rug, and um, he made it. He he ordered it. He ordered it a special size for his chair. He wanted to put his feet on it, in front of his chair when he's watching television. So it had to be a certain width. <laughs> so it was cute. He ordered his rug custom made, and I had to make it smaller because it was too. It would have been too big otherwise. So. Okay, are there any other questions? And if you have questions, please just, you know, comment even when we're done. You can still comment, and then I will answer them as quickly as I can. But please um, put your rugs up, because I'm anxious to see everybody's rugs. These are so much fun, and they all turn out so cool. You never know what they're going to look like until they're done. So, okay. Well, it's about time for Victoria, for those of us who are watching Victoria. Oh, we might have a new comment, it looks like. I love my rug. Oh, yeah, Connie got a rug for Christmas, didn't she, Connie? Thank you, girl, everybody. So, so Lynn, yeah, Lynn said great job. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Lynn. So, um, so hopefully everybody um, can come back. I will do, I'll put some stuff up about the next sew along, which will probably be the, the little pillow. And, and then um, if you have any questions, please um, 
either personal message me or put comments on the group. So I really enjoy, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this. I hope you are too. I like, I like to sew with my friends. So, all right, everybody have a nice evening and I can't get, there's a couple more comments, but I can't see them. Sorry guys. For some reason I can't get to, it was not scrolling up for me. Must be too many comments coming up. Oh, here we go. I got them, got it to work. What does it say? Margaret. Oh, okay. Yeah. A bunch of people still. Okay. So everybody have a good evening and I will maybe talk to you next week already. So we'll, we may not start the sewing line, but we may just have a little short thing, like maybe on some software or something. And then the next sew along will probably be the following week. So have a good evening. Good night.